Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for your participation in the Religions for Peace Eighth World Assembly. We have to remove the fear of peace. We talk of a fear of war. We have to remove the fear of peace. The reason I think it's important for us to come together is our history of many of our faiths has shown that many times we seem to be in competition with one another. What Religious for Peace does is try to show that our paths are more complementary. That yes, we have religious differences, but at the same time, we have a commitment to doing peacemaking. Hinduism is a path. It's a path to peace. Buddhism is a path. It's a path to peace. Judaism is a path. It's a path to peace. Christianity is a path. It's a path to peace. Islam is a path. It's a path to peace. Shinto is a path. It's a path to peace. Tribal religions are a path. They are a path to peace. I mean, even if you change one person's opinion, you've done a lot because I've met people who've never met a Muslim before, who have pre preconceived notions of what a Muslim is. Just changing their viewpoint, I think, is a big deal. When I come to this meeting of so many religious communities, how, how do I explain to them that it is possible for me as a, an Anglican Christian to actually work with a Buddhist, with a Hindu? Guided by the deepest principles of my own religious tradition and respectful of religious differences, I commit myself to multi-religious cooperation for what is good. I will work as a partner with believers of other religions on matters of deeply shared moral concern, such as stopping wars, helping the poor, and protecting our earth. Thank you for your commitment. I believe that WCRP for many of us is venture to say almost a holy space in which again we can all come from almost the most diverse body of human beings you could ever conceive of <laughs> and there's holiness to that for me it's now i i, I live about two or three, three years with the wcrp nobody had convey me to be a buddhist or a jesus i'm still have the same beer and the same face, and I am worshiping in my time. If there will be a meeting, uh, the meeting will be stopped because of the Muslims, they had to go and have their pray, own pray. So uh, it's the matter of just finding the way how to live together. The kind of charity that you have within your heart, that charity is what will help you to forgive that'll help you to reconcile. The first time I met uh, some of Rabbis, Jewish, those people in the past were my, my enemy. When I uh, met uh, some Rabbis and uh, I listened from them, and some of them is very sad about our situation, and they believe that uh, we must to, uh, to build our life together in this small land, in this holy land. The Oslo agreements did not include religion. There was no rabbis there, there were no imams, there were no Christian priests. <laughs> Trying to solve the conflicts around the holy land 
without taking into account that it's holy and people want to return there because they want to be in the Holy Land. It's like, it's, it's useless, you can't do it. You, you miss the point. I must tell you that I'm convinced, convinced, as a Jew and as a rabbi, that there will be peace, proper peace, complete peace with us and the Islam. The earth is cleansing herself, and we are being led, those who allow themselves to be led by the divine beings, we are being led to, to make all these changes also. If we can make earth, there's a semblance of heaven. What is it that we can do as young people that would really change the trend? Well, how can we change the trend from violence and move toward nonviolence, move toward peace?